Hello and welcome to Monetized History. My name is Daniel and today we're going to be looking at the Lebanese banknotes issued by the Banque du Liban from 1964 to 1988. The one pound note was issued between 1964 and 1980. Its value ranged from 32 cents in 1964 to 29 cents in 1980. A UV fluorescent security strip is visible on the obverse of the note. On the obverse of the one pound note is the temple complex at Baalbek with the six remaining columns of the Temple of Jupiter rising from the ruins. When the Romans ruled this part of the world, Baalbek was known as Heliopolis, the city of the sun. Helios, the Roman god of the sun, can be seen between two eagles on a relief sculpture at the lower right of the note. The Jovian temple is one of the largest ever built by the Romans. The reverse of the note features the lower gallery of the Jaita Grotto discovered in 1836. Parts of it can only be traversed by boat since the caverns are inundated by an underground river that supplies water for over 1 million Beiruti inhabitants via the Nahar al-Kalib, or Dog River. The watermark on this note is the two eagles from the Helios relief on the obverse. The five pound note was issued between 1964 and 1986. In 1964, it was worth $1.62, but by 1986, it was only worth 26 cents. When illuminated by UV light, the note's denomination becomes visible. The National Museum of Beirut dominates the front of this note. The museum was opened in 1942 and is the principal archaeological museum in the country. To the right is one of the Byblos figurines. Small statuettes found at both the Temple of Obelisks and the Temple of Balat Jabal in Byblos. The figurine is standing above a Phoenician coin from Byblos, which depicts a ship full of hoplites over a hippocamp, which is in turn over a murex shell. Above the Byblos figurine is an Achaemenid double protomy capital from the Temple of Ashmun, north of Sidon. And around the border of the note are excerpts from various ancient Phoenician inscriptions. The watermark is a Phoenician ship. This image comes from a sarcophagus in the National Museum of Beirut. The reverse depicts an arch bridge over the Nahar al-Kalib built sometime in the 16th century by Sultan Selim II, the son of Suleiman the Magnificent. Although the bridge itself isn't ancient, the road of which it is a part is. On the cliffs next to the road are commemorative stela, some of which are thousands of years old. The oldest commemorates a military victory of Ramses II. The 10 pound note was issued between 1964 and 1986. Its initial value was $3.25, but by 1986 it was worth only 52 cents. The note's denomination is visible when viewed under UV light. On the front of this note are the ruins of Anjar, a palace city built in the 8th century by the Umayyad Caliphate. The city was never completed and was abandoned before the year 800. It wasn't rediscovered until the 1940s. The ruins are renowned for their mix of Roman, Byzantine, and Islamic design. On the back of the note is Pigeon's Rock, just off the coast of Beirut. The rocks, which rise 60 meters out of the water, are said to be the petrified remains of the sea monster Cetus, slain by Perseus with the head of Medusa. The watermark is Fakhr al-Din II. He was the emir of Mount Lebanon under the Ottomans in the 1600s. He was the first to rule both the Druze and Maronite communities, and he is considered the founder of Lebanon as a political entity. The 25 pound note was issued between 1964 and 1983. It was worth $8.12 when it was first issued and $6.22 when it was withdrawn. Its denomination is visible under UV light. On the front of the 25 pound note is the Sea Castle of Sidon. It was originally built by Crusaders in the 13th century, but destroyed by the Mamluks when they drove the Crusaders from the Levant. It was rebuilt by Fakhr al-Din II during his rule but has since returned to a state of ruin. On the reverse is an Sailaha Fort, another structure built by Fakhr al-Din. It was constructed in the 17th century to guard the road between Beirut and Tripoli. The watermark on this note is a lion's head, similar to those found at the Temple of Jupiter in Baalbek. The 50 pound note was issued between 1964 and 1988. In 1964, it was worth $16.23. By 1988, it was worth just 14 cents. UV designs are visible on both sides of this note. On the obverse of the 50 pound note, we return to Baalbek, this time to the Temple of Bacchus. Although this temple wasn't as large as the one dedicated to Jupiter, it remains in much better condition and is one of the best preserved examples of Imperial Roman architecture left standing. I'm not sure of the origin of the bull mosaic in the top left corner, 
But bull iconography was common in the ancient world and was closely associated with Bacchus. On the reverse is the citadel of Raymond de saint gilles He was a French nobleman and the Count of Toulouse, as well as one of the leaders of the First Crusade in the 11th century. The original castle was constructed during the Siege of Tripoli in 1103. Nothing but the foundation remains of what was originally built. What can be seen today was built by Selim I, father of Suleiman. The watermark is a cedar tree, which has been associated with Lebanon for over 2,000 years. The 100 pound note was issued between 1964 and 1988. It was initially worth $32.47, but by 1988 it was worth only 27 cents. Both sides of this note fluoresce under UV light. On the front of the note is the Beit Din Palace. It was built in the late 18th century by Emir Bashir Shahab II as a palace. Since then, it has been used as a government building by the various occupying powers. Today, it is the summer home for Lebanese presidents. On the back of the bill are the famous Lebanese cedar trees. The earliest references to them go back as far as the Psalms of the Bible. Today, they are a symbol of the nation and the Lebanese people, appearing on both the flag and coat of arms. The watermark is Amir Bashir Shahab II and is based on a painting by Daoud Karum. Although Bashir was forced from power in 1840, the Shahab family continues to be active in Lebanese politics. The 250 pound note was only issued for 10 years between 1978 and 1988. Its initial value of $85.32 dropped to 68 cents over 10 years. The obverse of this note features UV fluorescent designs. On the front of this note is the Roman Triumphal Arch of Tyre. It was likely constructed after Emperor Hadrian conferred the title of Metropolis on the city in the 2nd century CE. Tyre is one of the oldest continually inhabited cities in the world. It has been part of the empires of Egypt, Phoenicia, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome, Byzantium, and the Ottomans. On the reverse is the colonnaded monument at Kalat Fakra. It is unknown when it was originally constructed or what it was for, but inscriptions on other structures at the site indicate it could have been built in the 4th century CE. The watermark is a relief of Jupiter's face found in the ruins of the Temple of Bacchus in Baalbek. Unlike most banknotes, the notes in this series don't focus on political or military heroes. Instead, they focus on monumental architecture of centuries and millennia past. As to why this is, we can only speculate. Lebanon had achieved its independence a mere 20 years before these notes were released. Before that, it had been a vassal state to the numerous empires that had swept through the region over the previous 2,000 years. Not only were there not enough political heroes to populate more than a few banknotes, no one knew what it meant to be Lebanese. The country was in the midst of an identity crisis. Geopolitically, the Nasser regime in Egypt and the Eisenhower regime in the US vied for influence over the political class, a fitting analog for the cultural divide between the Christian and Muslim populations. And more than most Levantine nations at the time, Lebanon was straddling the divide between the East and the West. On the one hand, Beirut was known as the Paris of the Middle East for its abundance of art, leisure, and prosperity. Its position as a crossroads between Europe and the oil-rich Gulf states coupled with its liberal economy and educated workforce, brought the country unprecedented wealth. On the other hand, the country was inundated with refugees following the first Arab-Israeli war, refugees who were launching attacks into Israel from Lebanese soil. In the midst of this growth and progress, Lebanon was again becoming a battlefield for larger regional powers. At the same time, its internal politics were being roiled by tensions between the Shia, Sunni, and Maronite factions of the government. In the absence of a national identity, the banknote designers seem to have turned instead to the past. In the place of presidents and national heroes, we find ancient temples and crumbling castles. Perhaps facing the daunting task of forging a nation out of the ashes of empires, the designers are symbolically laying the foundation for the future out of the stones of the past. But maybe it's not that deep. Given that the country was riding high on foreign investment and international tourism, Maybe the banknotes were a travel brochure, a collection of the best places to visit on your next trip to Lebanon. And now for the trivia. Are you ready? Why was the Mirex so important to ancient Phoenicia's economy? If you think you know, leave your answer in the comments and I'll reveal the answer tomorrow. That's all I've got. Thank you so much for watching. Did you have a favorite note from the video? 
Did you like the longer video format? What do you want to see next? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe.